Hello and welcome to Mr. Crowder's World. This podcast asks and answers the question, why do we think we know how far things are in space? It's a very tough question to answer since looking through a telescope offers a seemingly flat two-dimensional landscape of white sparkles we call stars against the blackness of space. How does a scientist extrapolate true distance from such a monotone flat image into a three-dimensional one with distances that seem too great to be true? The most recent track record for a known space distance is an object 13 billion light years away. This means that this cluster of stars is so far from the Earth that it took 13 billion years for its light to reach us. So an intelligence student would ask, why is it that we think we know this? How could anyone possibly know with any certainty that something in space could be that far away? How could we cross-reference this information without humans ever traveling any further than our own moon? A very good question to ask. Let's start at the beginning, with the first space distance ever measured, the moon. Eratosthenes, a Greek from 3rd century BC, that's 2,309 years ago, measured the Earth's circumference and then its diameter with an ingenious method of using sunlight and elementary geometry. He used a known distance between two places in the ancient world, Syene and Alexandria, Egypt. Syene is the location of the present-day Aswan Dam. The distance between these two Egyptian cities was 5,000 stades, a stade being an obsolete system of measurement no longer used. Eratosthenes reasoned that June 21st, being the summer solstice, would be a good day to make his geometric calculation for the circumference of the Earth which would lead to the Earth's diameter, an important number in ultimately determining the Moon's distance. First he took a leap of faith, making the assumption that the Earth was round, and then reasoned that the Sun would shine direct rays onto Syene on June 21st, because this was the only day of the year that the Sun could be seen reflecting off the water at the bottom of a deep well. Thus he could then draw an imaginary line through the well all the way through the center of the Earth, And then he simply drove a large stake straight into the ground in Alexandria, measured the angle of the shadow from the stake on June 21st, like a sundial, it was 7.2 degrees. That meant that given two parallel lines, sun to earth at Alexandria and the sun to Syene, and the bisecting angle of both parallel lines, 7.2 degrees, This angle was also the complementary angle of Alexandria to the Earth's center. What he had done was to calculate a pizza slice of the Earth, the outside of that slice with a known distance. So then he divided 7.2 degrees into the 360 degrees of the spherical Earth, the result being 50 slices. So then he simply multiplied 50 times 5,000, and that equals 250,000 stades or the modern equivalent of about 23,000 miles. Now we know it to be closer to 25,000 miles, the circumference of the Earth. Then to find the diameter of the Earth, he divided pi, 3.14, into the circumference, about 8,000 miles. Though historians disagree on the equivalence of the stade and the English units feet and miles, it's quite an accomplishment for his time to be within, at worst, 2,000 miles of our present-day circumference measurements. Then, just a bit later, in about the same time frame, another Greek, Aristarchus of Samos, calculated the distance to the moon, the first space distance ever calculated and verified in the modern world. He used Eratosthenes' Earth measurements and some geometric relationships of the lunar eclipse. He did this by the comparison of the penumbra, or conical shadow, created by a small object like a coin held out in sunlight to the penumbra of the Earth, and how long it took the moon to fully cross the shadow created by the Earth. Again, some geometry, ratios, and similar triangles would reveal this distance. Aristarchus, like every other telescope viewer, observed that the moon would fit through the Earth's shadow 2.5 times the moon being one in this ratio to the Earth's shadow of 2.5. One thing I have my students do each year is measure the length of the penumbra of a quarter. A quarter is almost exactly an inch in diameter. 
They hold a quarter up as high as they can from the ground, with it held perpendicular to the sun's rays. We then find that length of the penumbra is 108 inches. The person holding the quarter usually needs a table to stand on to get the distance far enough off the ground. So the ratio is created, quarter diameter of one to penumbra length of 108. And the other ratio is Earth's diameter of 8,000 miles to the penumbra length x. Cross, multiply, and divide the ratios to find the distance x. You then get the length of the Earth's penumbra, 864,000 miles. Now, since the moon fits through the shadow 2.5 times, a triangle base can be created by adding the moon diameter 1 to the 2.5 times greater width of the Earth's penumbra cone, and we get the base of a triangle with height to the Earth's surface of 3.5. Now if you divide this 3.5 into the Earth's distance to a penumbra length of 864,000, you get the distance to the moon of 240,000 miles. And there it was, the first official space distance, at least as far as the modern Western world is concerned. Now to get distances further and reaching a limit of about 200 light years away, we will need to use the Pythagorean theorem in math known as trigonometry. The mnemonic SOKOTOA is something every trig student in high school learns. The sine of theta equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, SOH, or SO. Then the cosine of theta equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, CAH, or CA. And then TOA means the tangent of theta equals the opposite side divided by the adjacent. Theta is the variable representing an angle. To get as far as you can with using geometry for space distances, you have to first form the largest base for a triangle with known space distance. Thanks to Edmund Haley, the very same guy the comet is named after, we used parallax to get our currently accepted solar distance of 146 million kilometers, or 91 million miles. It was in 1716 that Haley suggested a high precision measurement of the distance between the Earth and the Sun by timing the transit of Venus. However, Halley's big idea of verifying the solar distance using a trigonometric measurement technique called parallax wasn't first completed until after his death. Parallax is based on a phenomenon best illustrated by using your own binocular vision in a way that compares the apparent movement of things placed in front of our peripheral distance vision. As an analogy, each year I have my students focus on something on an opposite side of the room while pointing a finger upwards just in front of their nose and then with a fully extended arm. They compare how separated in the field of vision are the two fingers that their binocular vision melded into two. So you look at something distance, move your finger closer to your eyes, close one eye and then the other you should see the finger moving back and forth, almost all the way from one side of your field of vision to the other. And the further from the face the finger is held out, the closer together are your illusionary fingers. This is parallax, when you apply numbers to the idea of comparative movement across the field of vision. Humans use their eyes to create a geometric relationship in their brains automatically. And this is very similar to the way parallax is used for space distance. Since Earth revolves around the Sun with a period of roughly 365 days, you can look through a telescope and compare a closer space object's apparent movement in front of the distant backdrop of stars, because the closer object could again be observed 182.5 days later. That means a straight 180 degree line in space. So having the Earth on both sides of the Sun in its orbital plane becomes our largest triangle base from which to calculate our space distances. It's space's version of binocular vision. The limit is up to about 200 light years away. By this distance, theta gets so large that the math gives too great of an error for reliability. But that's far enough to verify, cross-reference, and calibrate the final distance measuring method I'll cover in this podcast, redshift. Redshift is the relationship of a phenomenon commonly known as Doppler shift with known distances and then estimating further distances with ratios. The Doppler effect, or Doppler shift, named after Austrian physicist Christian Doppler, who in 1842 noticed the change in frequency of a wave for an observer moving relative to the source of the waves. 
Now what this has to do with space distances is that the light gives off waves, like 